All right, can I cut over to the mini lecture screen? Cut, mm -hmm. cut, cut. All right. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to the mini lecture. I am, uh, I am uh, Dr. Dom Tartaglia, host of Folkwise Live and tracksuit enthusiast. And I, I was very happy when the tracksuits as folk dress was chosen as the mini lecture topic because finally one I can do. So I'm about to go off. You got does this sound right for everyone? Chat, you doing good? Doing good? Exclamation point tracksuits. Okay, I like it. Uh, yeah, I say we should get into it, chat. You ready? Let's go. Let's do it. Cool. I'm so excited. So, this is my tracksuits, my, <laughs> my legally not Adidas tracksuits as folk dress presentation. So, in... In 1974, William Nicolaisen coined the term distorted function, which means secondary use of a folk cultural item for purposes other than the ones we use it for, which was for what it was primarily designed and manufactured for. Uh, this phenomenon describes how you can take an object and use it for some other purpose than what it is produced for, and you've just created a folk object, an object used by a group for a specific purpose. For example, consider the image on the slide here, taking a gutter and planting herbs in it, or uh, bodybuilders applying hemorrhoid cream for definition. Instead of drawing fluid from your, um, uh, somewhere with inflammation, you can also draw it from your skin and give yourself dank vascularity and muscles that look shredded like a julian salad. I can't prove that that's how Hugh looks like this, but that's my guess. And the best part about tracksuits is while they are technically active wear, the most inactive people wear them. Myself included. Myself included. Don't worry. Give me one second. Much better, much better. Okay, uh, this this kind of uh, counts as uh, an example of distorted function the way uh, Nicolaisen was using it. Whereas Nicolaisen was saying, you know, sort of a like more literal function thing. You know, you make wheels move. You make a fence out of wheels when they don't move. Uh, what we're getting at here is how a tracksuit becomes. Uh, the symbol for sitting and not running. What else is the tracksuit distorting? And that's the question for tonight. <laughs> In the 1930s, the DuPont Corporation invented the first synthetic fabric, nylon. This space age fabric took a second to catch on. And the real watershed moment in the history of, uh, of nylon is when the Adidas company created the nylon cotton blend for their new item, Dry Strifen Training Sunsug, in 1967, a.k.a. the three-stripe training suit. After footballer Franz Beckenbauer became the first tracksuit model, by the end of the next decade, Americans would dub this combo of blended matching, pack, uh, blended matching pants and jacket combo the tracksuit as it was the default warm-up gear of track and field athletes. Here we see the great Steve Prefontaine wearing the American running brand Nike's tracksuit. I always think it's funny that, like, at this point, Nike was not making basketball shoes at all. Not until the 80s. And not to mention one of the most iconic tracksuit photos, John Carlos and Tommy Smith in tracksuits giving the Black Power salute at the 1968 Olympics. That's only a year after the first... Dry Strife and Training Sun Sugan were introduced. Peter Norman, the Australian track runner whose idea it was for each one of them to wear a single black glove, looks drippy as hell in the green and gold Australian track suit. By the end of the 70s, the track suit already started its foray into fashion. 
these tracksuits were more tailored with the implication that you wouldn't take them off for the race and then put it back on on the podium. These were the first fashion statement tracksuits. Take Bruce Lee in his final movie, The Game of Death, who wore an often imitated, never duplicated, fetching yellow tracksuit. He both looks great and has the mobility to be able to flying sidekick Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the chest. It's a wild movie, honestly. One second. Okay, much better, much better. What, what changes all of this in the late 70s is, is hip-hop. The 70s tracksuit looked fly, but also lent itself well to athletic competition. And who needs to both look good as fuck and have an unlimited range of motion? That's B-Boys. Early breakdancers, as early breakdancers, avoided the trials and temptations of life in the urban jungle by turning to dance and music instead of criminal activity. Their social bonds bled over into their sartorial choices. We have crews of boys who need matching clothes, then that let them perform flying ac acrobatic dance moves, but also look like a team? The tracksuit is the obvious choice, but the real innovators of tracksuits as far as street fashion goes are Run DMC. Hell yeah. <laughs> Run DMC canonized the tracksuit look in popular culture, and a big part of that is just they were the first black hip-hop artists to get big on MTV, which sort of canonized this look to white people in the United States. As Run DMC's personal style started evolving from leather jackets to matching tracksuits and Adidas's with no laces, Run DMC canonized the look for hip-hop streetwear. Notice the distorted function of sneakers with no laces, because it's the same message is wearing a tracksuit to pose with your friends on the street these guys don't need to run they stand their ground together as a team proud in a uniform as young black men and the kings of new york they don't panic they don't break they've turned the tracksuit from something that represents running to something that represents standing strong but at the same period jogging really caught on and the tracksuit was built less and less for track functionality and more for breathability and comfort in these low intensity exercises. This allowed the colorways to exponentially increase from solids and stripes to patterns and cross colors. As these tougher, uh, like physically tougher and more colorful shell suits took off, the innovators of the shell suit as folk dress, I am happy to say, are my people. Hey, there we go. The same way that African-American hip-hop artists turned the runner's warm-up suit into a symbol of you and your dudes rock crew standing your ground, the most badass Italians wore the most elaborate tracksuits, and chief among them was the mafia in the 80s, of 90, 80s and 90s. As the DA's office was trying to prosecute New York City mafia for once and for all, the mafiosos made the colorful tracksuit a sample. Here they are in runner's uniforms, but what's this? They're in teal and hot pink and not running when the cops come. The best articulation of this, well, I think there's two. Number one, this is a more recent example, but when Joey Chili went to his court date in a shell suit and Crocs, uh, absolute legend. But what's so interesting about this moment in tracksuit culture is that's how mobsters in this era were instantly hip to the most current pop culture depiction of what a tough guy looks like. Like, you can see this change in a generation, whereas Dapper Don John Gotti had three-piece suits and ties, John Jr. wore velour tracksuits. They both knew that they looked precisely like the toughest guy in their time period. But just as the mob empires of New York City were falling to the combined power of militarized police forces and financial capitals on holy alliance together, another... Authority, another authoritarian group of bros were watching their empire fall. God, I'm very proud of that transition. Okay, the Soviet Union 
was a human right was a human rights disaster, right? I'm I'm a simp for the aesthetic, but they were authoritarian as shit. That doesn't stop me from saying the fall of the Soviet Union was the single largest decline of living standards in human history. And the former USSR, uh, it, in there you have suddenly an interesting collision of folklore and mass culture. Here we have former socialist countries with robust public housing and public spaces, and yet no money, no job, no prospects. You have Western brands entering the space formerly held behind the Iron Curtain for the first time. So what's a Russian to do? with an apartment he owns but no savings, a large courtyard and nowhere to go, and an Adidas tracksuit because you're a tough guy, you drop squat in the courtyard, you pass the handle of vodka, the salami and the cigarette, and you hang out. The Gopnik aesthetic is similar to black men claiming the block and, a and Italians uh, standing silent at, a at arraignment, but this is more out of like desperation than machismo in a way. Here we have the tracksuit in instead of representing standing your ground it's more representative of a dead end in less than a century your nation advances from serfs to an engine of modernization that eats people alive to beating nazis and putting people into space and then after a disastrous war in afghanistan you're basically back to serfs you have nowhere to go but the courtyard to drink and you better look fly if you're not going to be going anywhere in this dead end and editor's note Number one, holy fuck, don't go to war in Afghanistan. And B, my heart breaks for Russian history ever since because it's just the story of kids dying in another disastrous and senseless ground war while 12 guys and a president become billionaires. So, so far, we have three stories of the distorted function of runners' costumes and in some way that they all distort criminality. We've got African-American pride, Italian-American loyalty, former Soviet kids making vagrancy a fucking vibe. But the other force here is nostalgia. As you would expect from any 30-year nostalgia cycle, these 80s and 90s folk costumes were contextualized as or intextualized as uh, mass media during the 2010s. And designers like Christopher, Clay, uh, Christopher Kane and Alessandro Michele for Gucci made the tracksuit streetwear, like high fashion streetwear. And if we're talking about reclaiming and distorting perceptions of your own criminality in a tracksuit in the 2010s, there's only one genre of music we are going to talk about, and that is grime. Man's never been in marquee when it's shut down, eh? Trust me, daddy. Trust me, daddy. Yeah. Hey, man's never been in. When it's shut down, that's not me and it's shut down. Ring, ring, pussy, it's shut down. Hey. Fashion week and it's shut down. Went to the show, sitting in the front row in a black track suit and it's shut down. Oh, oh, oh. Touch the road and it's shut down. Boy, better know when it's shut down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, take time if a man want to try me. No time. You saying, but when I run up on stage, I pick up the mic and it's reload time. Oh. Don't know your songs, but they know mine. That's why I got gigs just like Joe Grind. After the show, I'll be rolling mine. Yeah. Don't care about the no smoking sign. Oh, oh. They tried to steal my vision. This ain't a culture, it's my religion. God knows I don't wanna go prison. But if a man won't try me, trust me, listen. Me and my G's ain't scared of police. We don't listen to no politician. Everybody on the same mission, and we don't care about your ism and schism. Cause it's shut down. That's not me, and it's shut down. Ring, ring, pussy, it's shut down. Fashion week, and it's shut down. Went to the show, sitting in the front row, in the black track suit, and it's shut down. Touch the road, and it's shut down. Boy, I better know when it's shut down. You wanna act like a G for the camera? You say you're Muslim. You say you're Rasta, say you don't eat pork, don't eat pussy, liar, you're just an actor, blood, you're not on your dean, and if Selassie I saw you, he would say blood, take off the red, gold and green, them and are soft just like ice cream, scene, start moving correctly, if you don't want to upset me, you get me, you trying to show me you're friendly, I told you before the shit don't impress me, just. I bet I'll make you respect me when you see the man them are selling out Wembley, roll deep in a blacked out Bentley, pull up outside like what one sexy, yeah, and it's shut down, that's not me and it's shut down, ring ring pussy, it's shut down. Hey. Fashion week and it's shut down. Went to the show, sitting in the front row in a black track suit and it's shut oh, down. Oh, Touch oh. the road and it's shut down. Boy, better know when it's shut down. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of young men, all dressed in black, dancing extremely aggressively on stage. It made me feel so intimidated, and it's just not what I expect to see on prime time TV. No, a different class. That is what I want to see on prime time TV, lady. All right. Grime music brought the tracksuit back and it covered all the fronts. Black, man do, black men doing their own British spin on hip hop culture, check. They're not just afraid of the law, uh, but they're not afraid to speak truth to power as exemplified in some of Grime's best and most socially conscious tracks. 
And they embody the spirit of the Gopniks partying through a neoliberal capitalist hellscape because, I mean, these guys mostly live in London during Brexit. As an Italian-American, I look forward to what the British do with the torch that has been passed to them for tracksuits. They will use their tracksuits and that British eye for style to embody everything that the tracksuit embodies as folk costume. The distorted function of running clothes to make casual wear, which not only reinforces group identity with an identifiable uniform, but also critiques systemic notions of criminality while reveling in the unfair world left to the common person, all while combining nostalgia and high fashion. I would like to say uh, thank you to Dr. John Price, who helped me put this uh, presentation together. Uh, thank you to... I don't know, in order, Guy Ritchie, Skepta, uh, John Gotti, Polly Walnuts, Run DMC, and all the tracksuit innovators. Shouts out to the movie Style Wars. And thank you. That was my mini lecture. Thank you. Oh, thank yeah. You. Thank you, Carrie. Um, do we have uh, <laughs> questions Questions from the chat or questions from the, the moderators? Uh, I just, I want to thank you for sending me onto another Dizzy Rascal spiral this week. How you gonna make a dream come true? <laughs> uh, that's going to be the rest of my week. I'm not mad. Um, I, I, Caitlin knew that when you two were vamping about things later in March, I was putting on every tracksuit I owned. <laughs> uh, thank you for keeping my secret. Uh, but, uh, yes, Carrie, I, I, I briefly was wearing 10 tracksuits. <laughs> I truly, truly a legend. Uh, it's your commitment to the art and the pedagogical underpinnings of what Folkwise is about is noted and appreciated. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man's never been it. When it's shut down, that's not me and it's shut down. Ring, ring, pussy, it's shut down. Hey. Fashion week and it's shut down. Went to the show, sitting in the front row in a black tracksuit and it shut down. Touch the road and it shut down. Boy, I better know when it shut down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, take time if a man wanna try me. No time. You saying boat when I run up on stage, I pick up the mic and it's reload time. Don't know your songs, but they know my